Welcome to the Reconciliation and Compliance Review portion of the Regional Training. Throughout this presentation, you will notice these icons. They are to let you know of additional resources that are available for you. These resources can be found on the Commission's website or in your Web Grants portal. We are going to start with Reconciliation. Reconciliation is a verification that all Cal Grant funds have been dispersed to students and those disbursements have been correctly reported to the Commission via the Web Grants roster through the application of the appropriate payment codes and dollar amounts. Think of it this way. The Commission provides funding to your institution's fiscal office as well as reports for that funding so that your fiscal office can successfully track and monitor all Cal Grant funds. The Commission also provides the Financial Aid Office with various reports and rosters used for reporting disbursement information to the Commission. Your institution's Registrar, Financial Aid Office, and Fiscal Office may all collect different documents that may be necessary to reconcile payments. So it is important for all of these offices at your institution to be sharing and making accessible the various documents that are needed for reconciliation with each other. All too often, these offices work in silos and neglect to share necessary documents with each other. Remember that if an institution is selected for a compliance review, the entire institution is being reviewed, not just the financial aid office. Before we get into the operational details of reconciliation, let's take a look at the timeline. For example, let's look at the 2020-2021 reconciliation timeline. From August 2020 to June 2021, Campuses will disperse the bulk of their Cal Grant awards and also report the payments in the Web Grant system. In July 2021 to September 2021, schools generally make any final necessary corrections. Then, in September, the Commission permanently closes the award year. After the award year has closed, the Commission sends out invoices to institutions that have Cal Grant monies left over. These funds are due back along with any interest accrued on them to the Commission. In October, those institutions who have not returned the excess funding to the Commission will receive penalty letters, which, if not paid, could result in the loss of future term advances, supplemental payments, or even termination of the institution's Cal Grant participation. There are four steps to accurate reconciliation. The first step is to ensure that payment and student statuses are reported to the Commission correctly. The second step is to account for funds received from CSAC. The third is to verify accuracy of disbursement amounts for each student. And the fourth step is to ensure that any remaining funds are returned to the Commission after final reconciliation. We will go over each step individually and explain what it means. Verifying accuracy of disbursement amounts means ensuring that your school is dispersing the correct amount a student is eligible to receive. In doing so, you may find that you need to change a student's eligibility or adjust in a payment. If you find you need to report any changes that affect eligibility for new or renewal students, your office needs to send a grant record change form, G21, to the Commission. G21 forms are used to update a student's Cal Grant eligibility, such as new financial information or grant data changes, including a dependency status change. Adjustment payments for other reasons, such as attendance status, for example, are not reported on a G21 form, but instead on the Cal Grant roster with a student's payment. This also includes ensuring that you are correctly adjusting tuition awards for students who withdraw from your institution. The Cal Grant award should not exceed the charged tuition amount. One aspect you should be aware of is a student's limited eligibility for certain situations, because, as we know, not every student is in the same financial situation. A limited eligibility example could be that a student is receiving a final payment or has 12% remaining eligibility versus 50%. In these cases, a prorated amount will show on the Web Grants roster because the student only has that remaining Cal Grant percentage left. Cal Grant funds are received at the business office of the educational institutions. As a financial aid administrator, you will be able to check the amount of funds being sent by checking the monthly payment activity report, which is available in Web Grants. Depending on your school's preferred method, the funds will come via a warrant or electronic funds transfer, EFT. If you have questions about your funds or about the EFT, 
please contact the Commission. Supplemental payments are sent on a weekly basis via check for reconciled payments or adjustments typically after an advance has been exhausted. These supplemental payments are deductions from the running CalGrant balance. When all CalGrant funds are exhausted, the State Controller's Office is contacted automatically and additional funds are sent via EFT or warrant. All supplemental payments will appear on the following month's monthly payment activity report. You must verify disbursements by ensuring that payments reported to the Commission accurately reflect the amount dispersed to each student. You should check for reconciled payments or adjustments, RP or RA, on a weekly basis and you can use the Accept Reject Report. You can also utilize the Reconciliation Summer Report and Detailed Data Report to compare against your accounting ledger reports. Final reconciliation happens in September following the award year. All roster payment adjustments and corrections should be done prior to the announced deadline. Excess funds must be returned to the Commission and they cannot be applied to any other students and cannot be carried over to the next award year. Invoices are sent to the institutions in late September and are due within 30 days. Any dispute regarding the invoice will not be reviewed until the invoice is paid in full. Please submit a check made out to the California Student Aid Commission to return funds for the closed academic year. Please include an enclosed letter of explanation that explains the following, the student name, CSAC ID number, term for which funds are being returned, amount, and the contact information. Please mail the envelope to California Student Aid Commission Fiscal and Administrative Services Division, PO Box 419026, Rancho Cordova, California 95741. Now that we have covered reconciliation, we are going to briefly cover the program compliance process an institution may face if they are selected for a reconciliation review. The first step is the initial contact. The school will receive a phone call from an auditor approximately two to three months prior to the scheduled field or desk review date. The auditor will provide school staff with the date of the review the academic year and the programs that will be reviewed. The compliance review is an institution-wide responsibility that usually includes the admission and records and accounting office. The next step is the engagement letter. After the initial contacts, school staff will receive an engagement letter confirming the review date and itemizing the information and documentation that the school needs to submit to the auditor. These items include, but are not limited to, school catalogs, student expense budgets, policies and procedures for the review period, and a completed program survey. Documents are reviewed prior to the arrival of the auditor at the institution. The next step is the entrance interview. An entrance interview will be conducted with school staff responsible for administering commission programs. The auditor will explain what to expect during the review for the week and answer any questions to facilitate the review process. Then, the field review length, this is the review type that involves a site visit lasting approximately four to five days. 40 student files are selected at random, and the student's documents are provided by the school will be examined by the auditor, and the findings are documented. Any questions, comments, and non-compliance issues will be directed to the school contact. This contact will have an opportunity to provide a written explanation and any necessary supporting documentation. Next is the daily wrap-up and the pre-exit process. This allows for the financial aid office to discuss discrepancies identified on a daily basis. The auditor will conduct an exit interview with school staff summarizing the outcome of the review. Then there's a draft report and it's a 60-day process. This includes peer review and management review. It is mailed, but it can also be emailed upon request. Reviewing the report and the institution response means that the school will receive the draft review report identifying areas of non-compliance and required action. The school must respond within 30 days from receipt of the draft review report. After all outstanding issues have been resolved, the school will receive a final report closing the review. Please note that this review process is standard for all reviews, not just program compliance. Here are the most common audit findings. 
The transfer entitlement finding has to do with eligibility. Schools must ensure prior to dispersing funds that students who submit the G6 transfer entitlement certification actually meet eligibility requirements. In addition, 10% of new and renewal E2 awards are randomly flagged for verification of these requirements. Graduated or equivalent from California high school, a California resident at time of high school graduation or on their 18th birthday, under age 28 at the time of transfer, a direct transfer from a community college to a BDGI, sufficient financial need, and a 2.4 community college GPA. The AB 540 affidavit finding can involve a couple of different issues. The first one is that schools may not be collecting the affidavit. One way to ensure that these forms are received is to customize your roster to display the DREAM app flag on the California DREAM Act application records. Once you know who your DREAM Act students are, you can confirm whether the affidavit was filed. If not, you can reach out to your students to remind them of this requirement. Remember that the affidavit is kept on campus and must be provided to your auditor if requested. Another reason this may be considered a finding is if California residency was not established. Sometimes the admissions department will have different state residency verification practices than the financial aid office. Please ensure that both departments are in good communication and are sharing documents like the AB 540 affidavit if necessary. The education level verification policies differ from campus to campus, and some community colleges will cap EL at EL2 or sophomore, while others will base EL strictly on the number of completed units. This is up to campus discretion, so either way works. However, the EL policy must be applied consistently for all students. The next finding is SAP not in compliance with Title IV. Per the Cal Grant Handbook, the campus SAP policy must be at least as stringent as the federal definition in the FSA Handbook with regard to minimum GPA requirement, the PACE or quantitative standards, which would be complete and pass classes within 150% or academic year max time frame, and schools can adopt stricter SAP policies, but this finding usually results if schools do not apply the federal minimum standards. An additional common finding is no written policies and procedures. This one is pretty straightforward. Campuses must maintain updated policies for each of these items. Now, this is not a comprehensive list because there are others, but we do want to recommend that you have policies on the following the administration of the Cal Grant programs, satisfactory academic progress, disbursements, procedures by which Cal Grant funds are received, processed, dispersed, reconciled, and returned to the commission, interest calculation procedures, award packaging procedures, refunds and repayment, over award resolution, confirmation of citizenship status, and completion of the verification process. Please engage with us on social media where we post important updates and deadlines for students and schools. Thank you for watching this video. If you have any questions, please contact school support by phone or email.